computer is correct, then with the amount of fuel remaining, the Airbus will no longer be able to make it to Lisbon. Captain Pichet is forced to divert the flight. We've got to divert. Get onto Ocean 8 Control, where's the nearest airfield? Transat 236 Heavy Santa Maria Control, can you advise nearest airfield? We have a possible fuel problem. The nearest runway is over 300 kilometers away. With the fuel remaining, Lages Military Air Base on the tiny island of Tercera in the Azores should be within reach. Santa Maria Control, Transat 236 Heavy. Proceed to 30 flight level 390 direct. 350 miles to threshold. Are you declaring an emergency? Stand by, Santa Maria Control. Not yet. It must be the computer. Transat 236 Heavy Santa Maria Control, no assistance required yet. Flight 236 continues flying south for the next 25 minutes. Everything in the cabin seems normal. But in the cockpit, the fuel readings are getting worse. Must be the computer. I've checked. There's nothing in the trim or center tank. And the gauges show only seven and a half... According to the fuel gauges, the plane is using fuel much faster than normal. Whether they believe the gauges or not, the captain has no choice. He must warn air traffic control. We have to declare a fuel emergency. Transat 236 Heavy Santa Maria Control. Santa Maria Control, Transat 236 Heavy, go ahead. Transat 236 Heavy, declaring fuel emergency. I really hope it's a computer bug. Because if we land in the Azores, we'll have a plane full of fuel, they'll crucify us. But at 6.13 a.m., less than an hour from the first fuel alarm, the full gravity of their situation strikes home. The right-hand engine runs out of fuel and cuts out. We're losing engine number two, I don't believe this. Okay, maximum thrust on number one. What's going on? Uh-oh. Yes. Uh -oh. yes. uh -oh. Lights started flickering on and off, which I thought was kind of odd, strange. On one engine, the Airbus will not fly at 39,000 feet. They must descend quickly. Try to transfer fuel from center tank and the trim tank. Transferring. Fuel quantity is reaching zero. This can't be. We're not gonna go completely dry on this airplane. All right, we can't stay at 39,000 feet with just one engine. We'll descend to 33,000 to control our speed. 236 Galagis Tower, we have lost one engine, engine flame out. Roger, Transat 236, we can see you on primary radar. You are at 135 nautical miles from Lages Field. We are 135 nautical miles from Lages Field. For the next 10 minutes, the stricken Airbus continues on its one remaining engine. The pilots still believe that the computer may be partly faulty and that they can make it to Lages with fuel to spare. At the end, might be all right. Fuel gauge is falling fast, though. It's, it's nearly hitting zero. Thirteen minutes after the right-hand engine cut out, and with 157 kilometers still to go, the left engine begins to fail. We're losing number one. Mayday, mayday, mayday. We have lost both engines due to fuel starvation. We are gliding now. One of the most sophisticated airliners of the modern era, carrying 306 passengers and crew, is now nothing more than a giant glider, drifting steadily down towards the ocean. Oh. 
isn't working. I guess. Excuse me, can somebody come? I'm very safe. Where's the flight attendant? Hello? Hello? Um, you can literally hear a pin drop. The, the exterior, there was no sound in that plane, in that cabin at all. A lot of people were praying and um, screaming for God. List of functions we've lost. We have no more stabilizer. Your blue and yellow hydraulic. No ADR two and three. No anti skid No reversers. Rudder trim. Radio HF one and two. Lost With the loss of both engines, we have no electrical system. If the engines aren't running, the generators aren't running. So there's there's no power on the airplane. There is a, a small device. It's called a ram air turbine. It will deploy from underneath the fuselage near the wing fairing, and it's it's. It's a small propeller that deploys out the bottom of the fuselage and it spins in the wind. And that small propeller will provide very limited electrical and hydraulic systems to run the aircraft. In other words, although it's a glider, at least it's a controllable glider. Calculate how far we can go with our glide angle, will you? Um, well, we're now at 30,000 feet at the rate of descent of 2,000 feet per minute. We can hang on, hang on for 14 or 15 minutes. What? I don't want to die on our honeymoon. I was just trying to calm her down, like try and reassure her that everything would be okay. It's a very big struggle um, to stay calm when you're considering your own death. Without power, the plane loses 1,000 feet in height for every five kilometers it travels forward. They can reach the Azores, but if the pilots make a mistake, they may face a forced landing on the water. We have to ditch in the water. Air Transat Flight 236 is now drifting without fuel over the Atlantic. Although their initial calculations show that the plane should make it to La Gez, Captain Pichet must now follow standard emergency procedure in a passenger jet over water. Prepare the cabin. Okay. The cabin's slowly depressurizing. We need to put our oxygen masks on. The loss of engine power means the cabin will soon depressurize. We're preparing to ditch the plane. I need you to put on your life jackets right now. Within probably, I'd say, two minutes, um, I saw flight attendants with life jackets in their hand running down the aisles. And obviously, that was a, a sign of fear. Um, what, you know, what was happening was the first question that popped in my mind. You know, you don't really know what to think. Um, but people did start to panic at that point when they were told to put on life jackets. This isn't working, no, it's all right? It doesn't it's work. Remain, please keep her calm. It's not working. Hold on, she's so dumb. She's so dumb. My best friend was talking to his father. His father died three years ago. But he's talking to him because he thought for sure he was going to be joining him. Ditching a large passenger jet on the water presents a severe hazard. If the Airbus 330 has to make a forced landing, the chances of survival are bleak. In my personal opinion, I don't think these airplanes would make very good boats. Typically, uh, an airplane with a low mounted tail like this, as it enters the water, one of the first things that's going to hit the water is the tail. And it's probably going to be ripped right off. And the fuse lodge is probably going to open right about in there. In 1996, a Boeing 767 ran out of fuel off the coast of East Africa. Its last moments were caught on amateur video and reveal what happens when an airliner attempts a controlled landing on water. Of the 175 people on board the Ethiopian Airways jet, only 50 survived. The chances of it surviving a, a ditching and floating for very long are not very good. 
If Air Transat Flight 236 has to carry out a similar maneuver, it faces an equally grave outcome. With over 100 kilometers before they reach the Azores, the pilots face a long and difficult maneuver. They need to keep the plane gliding for more than 15 minutes to reach the Azores. Transat 236 Heavy to Lajes Tower. Lajes Tower receiving Transat 236 Heavy. Do you have us on radar, Transat 236? We have you on primary radar. Confirm you're at 80 miles out. Your heading is good. Transat 236 Heavy Lajes Tower, we are trying to make the runway. Please describe runway, heading, and length. Lajes Tower, Transat 236 Heavy. Runway is 33 and 10,865 feet long. Airport dead ahead on your present heading. Please advise when you have it in sight. Transat 236 Heavy. We cannot see the airport. We will tell you when we can. As the minutes tick by, the long wait for those on board is agonizing. That's it. That's this is it. This is it's over. They're just gonna die in the next five to ten minutes. I had contemplated the idea that we would die, certainly. And kind of you can, I think in that moment you can accept it more than you think you would accept it. The torture of the whole fact that you're gonna die, which I totally thought I was going to, is worse to me than dying. If I'm gonna die, just kill me now. Just, just get a gun and shoot me, or just let this plane go down and nosedive into the ocean and then just die instantly. On the ground, emergency services prepare for the crash landing of a fully loaded airliner. With 20 kilometers to go, the crew now prepare for the most dangerous part of the operation, getting their plane on the runway in one piece. Elijah's Tower, do you have our distance from the threshold now and weather, please? Roger, Transat 236 Heavy. You are eight miles out according to primary radar, airspeed 280 knots according to our reading. Visibility unlimited. You should have the airport in sight. Negative, Elijah's Tower. Until now, we cannot see the runway. There is no room for error. Without power, the pilots have only one chance at landing. If they miss or overshoot the runway, the results could be catastrophic. I got it, just to the right. Minimum rat speed is 140 knots. Maximum speed for gravity gear extension, 200 knots. I'm not lowering the gear until the last minute, okay? Okay. The crew struggle to lose height and speed for landing. Roger, Lajas, six nautical miles. Let's open the slats. It'll slow us down a bit. Slats out and locked. As they approach the runway, their speed increases dangerously. Too fast, and they could run off the end of the runway. Lower the gear. Hold on. Speed is about 200. All right. I stabilize the speed. Can you give me a landing speed, please? No engine, no flaps. Ideal approach speed is 170 knots. We're too fast. Yes.